Welcome to my classroom. I am Nisli. In this video, I shall try to explain what resting membrane potential is. Before starting, may I remind you that you need to have a good knowledge of Nernst potential in order to be able to understand the mechanisms that I am going to describe here. So let us start. What is resting membrane potential? All cells in our body have an electrical potential difference between the inner side and the outer side of the cell membrane. This electrical potential difference is called resting membrane potential. The magnitude of the resting membrane potential in most cells are between minus 90 millivolt to minus 60 millivolt. In other words, we are trying to say that inside of the cell membrane is 90 millivolt more negative compared to the outside of the cell membrane or outside of the cell membrane is plus 90 or plus 60 millivolts more positive compared to the inner side of the cell membrane. Conventionally, we, when we are talking about the membrane potentials, we refer to the inner side of the membrane. And so the resting membrane potential is approximately between minus 90 and minus 60 millivolts. May I remind you before going further that all electrical events taking place in the body occur in a very narrow area in the neighborhood of the cell membrane. Therefore, we prefer to call them membrane potentials rather than cell potentials. The rest of the intracellular fluid inside the cell or extracellular fluid outside the cell is electrically neutral, which means that the number of positive charges in these areas are equal to the number of negative charges. The cell does not produce the resting membrane potential at the moment that you start looking at it. It is already there, it has been produced. But in this video we shall try to see how it might have been produced in order to be able to understand it better. And the mechanisms that we are going to use in understanding how it might have been produced is also going to be useful in understanding how the cell brings the membrane potential back to the resting level after local potentials or action potentials. So let us try to understand the resting membrane potential by considering a few different cells. While I am giving different examples, I would like you to keep in mind a few constant points, which are there is high potassium inside the cell, in all cells, there is a high concentration of sodium outside the cells. Nernst's potential of potassium is approximately minus 80 millivolts in all these cells. And the Nernst potential of sodium is approximately plus 61 millivolt in all of them. This is our cell number one.
how are we going to measure the resting membrane potential? We can use a very sensitive voltmeter connected to very fine electrodes. We place one of the electrodes on the inner side of the membrane and the other one on the outer side of the membrane to measure the resting membrane potential. And in cell number one, when we measure the resting membrane potential, we find that it is minus 80 milliwatts. What shall we think now? How this membrane potential may have been produced? If we were to produce it in experimental level, what should we place on the cell membrane in addition to the information that we have here? We know that potassium is high inside the cell and the chemical force for potassium is going to push potassium outward. Sodium is high outside the cell and the chemical force will push sodium into the cell. But a force is not enough. We know that two conditions must come together for ions to be able to move through the cell membrane. One condition is the presence of a force that pushes the ion and this force can be a chemical or electrical force. But there is a second condition needed and this second condition is the presence of an ion channel. If, I'm saying if, this cell had channels specific for sodium, then the chemical force of sodium would be effective. It would push sodium ions into the cell and in the end bring the cell membrane potential to the nearest potential of sodium which is plus 61 millivolt. But as we can see very well that we are far away from plus 61. So it is not possible that there are any sodium channels on the membrane of this cell. So what type of channels must be present in this cell? There has to be some potassium channels in this cell. So when the cell membrane potential was being produced, when the resting membrane potential was being produced, chemical force pushed potassium outward and this created a resting membrane potential of minus 80 millivolt. At this condition we can see that the resting membrane potential of cell number one is equal to the nearest potential of potassium. When we see a condition like this we must think about the number number and type of channels that are present in the cell membrane. So in this cell we cannot say that there are any sodium channels. This cell has no sodium channels but we can say that this cell has potassium channels and these type of channels that produce the resting membrane potentials are either called leak channels or resting potassium channels. So if we summarize what I have tried to explain here, we always know that every cell has high potassium inside, high sodium outside. This makes the nearest potential of potassium somewhere around minus 80 and nearest potential of sodium somewhere around plus 61. So these values may change more or less from cell to cell, but they're approximately reasonably similar. Now, with these conditions in our mind all the time, when we see a cell membrane uh, with a resting membrane potential of minus 80 millivolt, which is equal to the nearest potential, we must understand that the cell membrane has only leak potassium channels but no sodium 